you know, my hunch was that if I could create a sense of like wavering pitch, um, even with a piano, which is normally a fixed pitch uh, instrument, with preparation, I was able to create three different versions of a single pitch and kind of with tremolo, create a varying uh, wavering pitch kind of feeling. which is melancholic and has a sort of an ache to it. And so now that ache is embedded into every note that you play on the instrument. It's more pronounced as you go low. You hear it, it's like searching and wavering. There's so much information just in that single sound. Sometimes designing an instrument is, it's kind of surreal because it feels like playing a performance and that's really what it is. It's like playing something twice. And I'm not sure like how to wrap my brain around that, but all I know is it's, it's a very surreal feeling. It's like a resurrection of some kind. Another thing about this, this type of instrument where there's some sort of contour that's embedded in into the sample, into the performance that you're working with, when you layer that contour with itself playing back at a different speed, you're inevitably getting a lot of chance uh, interaction with itself. And so there's a, a kind of an ongoing variability and, and an aspect of chance. How, how the different ac accents in, at one playback speed interact with the accents of another, uh, of the other playback speed, it's, it's, it's so exciting. And it's, it's something that you could respond to. For me, that's one of the goals is to, to design an instrument that I can actually respond to, that responds to me, but that I can respond to as well and imbuing chance into your programming like this um, is, is the key to that. This is a good demonstration of some sounds that might be hiding. So we can see if this works, this may not work. Here's a super, super high squeak sound that was sort of an accident in the recording. I'm gonna cut it up, bounce it down to an audio file. Again, I've already sort of decided on the mix and the mic so that I want, so it's a pretty simple process to then, you know, create a a single stereo file for it. Just print some fades on here. I don't really have to print fades because I can do that later in um, contact, but I like to have clean samples. Can't hurt, right? And again, this could be a failed experiment, but it's so high that I'm wondering if playing it back super low, if we can hear something about it that's sort of invisible in real time. Um, okay, opening up a blank contact instance. Here's that sample I just made. It sounds like this. Super squeaky. Um, now, when you drag a file right onto, con onto an empty instance of contact, it'll map to, um, to C3. Because the sample is so high, I've already changed it up to C7. I don't have perfect pitch. I can't tell what that pitch is, but I'm, I know it's way up there. So I'm just gonna like approximate how, where it is up there. So when I play the middle of the um, keyboard, it'll be a lower sound. Oh, oh that's so nice. <laughs> it's definitely a rainy sound. It's almost synthy, which is really, which is really unexpected, actually. I love it. I'm totally gonna make something with that. <laughs> Ooh, and I love how hashy it is. 
that's all floor noise that like that's actually a whole high line noise that's now in the mid-range that used to be up way up high and now it's right there in the middle i love it it's like actually adds a, a, another um, aspect of depth to the instrument it's very cool subscribe to soundfly to get started <laughs>